morning, my name is Jan and I'm coming from uh, Beijing, as you can see and as you can hear from my French accent. <laughs> when, when you hear Beijing, what comes to your mind first? Usually that's what comes to your mind, it's air pollution. And I've been living there for about 18 years already and I never really cared about air pollution until I started to have children. I asked myself, how much are my children breathing of air pollution indoors, outdoors? How many years of their life are they maybe losing by living in China? So as I'm a science guy, I really care about the data. And I was really looking into what is this air pollution about? And I realized it's not a China problem. Many places have huge problem. It's actually affecting and killing 7 million people per year. That's more than AIDS, than a car accident and malaria all combined together. So this is one of the major disaster that is currently happening. And so few people yet have access to the data to protect themselves. So I looked for solution and the only acceptable solution I could find is this big box that you can see behind. So that costs roughly between 50,000 to 100,000 US dollar to operate per year. And that doesn't quite fit in my living room to know the air quality indoors. So I decided to work with uh, my partner, now business partner, to find a very good solution that could bring the cost down, that could have a similar level of accuracy to understand the air pollution. And we decided to combine some of our expertise. So my partner is uh, really good in uh, IoT, in also big data, and we combine also some of my experience in artificial intelligence and quite a few different things together to build the world's most smartest air quality monitor, which you can see uh, right now here. So this is a commercial product which gives almost the same uh, reliable data, accurate data as the big machine that you've seen, this $50,000 to $100,000 machine that you've seen. And it really enables people to uh, give them the right level of data so that they can protect themselves. And we've got like quite a few researchers, like about 10 to 15 universities around the world using this as a way to measure accurately the air pollution. But really, what makes the strength of our solution is the big data and artificial intelligence behind so this machine learning cloud-based computing system, which is there not just to get the data from our own devices, but also from public sources, uh, from, uh, um, like a, from quite a few different sources as well as uh, validate this data, collect it, and maybe recalibrate it sometimes, and before to publish it. And the exciting stuff is this data can be used to activate actions. So like for example, to ventilate rooms, to start air purifiers based on the learnings of the users. So this is really a powerful uh, tool that we have built, especially focusing on one of the aspects of machine learning, which is like uh, used for forecasting. And we are already forecasting air quality data in 6,000 cities using this uh, methodology. And our app is actually used by quite a large number of people. But really what I'm so excited about is that we have developed this uh, solution and deployed it. And last week I was in Manila and I deployed these air quality monitors there with the Department of uh, uh, Natural Resources, Minister of Environment, where we have enabled the local people to know the air pollution. And I'm really glad to see that because we are like building even more exciting solutions about getting the data out to the people, being one of them being this global health pulse of the earth all based on uh, our data point as well as also uh, the, the machine learning algorithm that we have developed. So really, we, this is a market with millions of devices everywhere and we are targeting this one so that our children in the end can breathe uh, clean and fresh air as what you can see here. Thank you. Yeah. Can you give us a sense of the, maybe the, the cost of the solution, especially the hardware side? So on the hardware side, so we are retailing this one, so that is purchasable already uh, for about $200, 199 if you're in Europe a little bit more, but basically in the 200 US dollar price point. Could you give us uh, um, an insight on the precision of uh, your uh, measures? Uh, because I have an application myself of uh, the pollution in Paris, for instance, and it tells me every single day that the pollution is high to moderate to high, and I don't know what to do with that. So what is the uh, granularity, granularity so, <laughs> of your so You want to know measures. how you protect yourself from the data you get, right? Yeah. So uh, uh, that was the first question to myself, you know, when I, uh, living in Beijing, this is a major 
problem, so I want to protect my children. So the best thing is like to protect yourself indoors. That's the place you spend 90% of your time. So if you can ensure that your indoor air quality is good with this device, that's what's enabling you to see, then going outside for 10% of your time is actually not a major issue. The worst case is you can always wear this kind of uh, masks to protect yourself. So, but really, uh, how, I mean, we know that the data is published for outdoors. First, it's not always 100% real time, and it's not very local. With this device, you get really local, high quality data for the air pollution. So that's a very big empowerment to people to understand the air pollution around them so they can protect themselves and also take actions not to have emissions. Thomas Trelov from Air Liquide. Um, I mean, you've been starting in Beijing, I guess, uh, and we've been seeing in the picture that basically you can literally see the pollution in the air. Uh, how do you convince people that live, for instance, in Paris, where you don't see the pollution, to raise the awareness, to basically take action, and basically think about your pollution? Okay, so uh, air pollution is a global problem, and of course, Beijing, Pakistan, India are like really, really bad places from that point of view, but still Paris. Once I arrived yesterday, uh, from I took air from the airport up to here, I could hardly see actually the buildings like about like a few kilometers away. Air pollution was at that moment worse than Beijing. Nobody knows, nobody kind of cares about that. So I think really what I want to do is to bring these devices to a much larger market so that people really realize how much impact they are creating on the earth. Once they know that, people can take more actions and really make our place a better world. Thank you so much.